insulation, adhesive, and fixings. Welcome back to episode three of this install guide. Adding insulation to a property exterior opens up a world of benefits, boosting thermal comfort, reducing energy bills, and building fabric protection. All of this with zero impact on internal floor space. Now the substrate has been primed, you will need to start the process of securing the insulation with one of our adhesives. Before we can get to that though, we must first choose an adhesive. EWI Pro produce a range of dual purpose base coat adhesives that are designed to provide you with the best results for your project. For those of you insulating with EPS board, we recommend using EWI 220 EPS base coat. For installations such as mineral wool or Kingspan K5, we recommend our best-selling EWI 225 premium base coat. Step two, mix your adhesive. Both adhesives come as a dry mix in a 25 kilo bag and should be combined with just under six liters of clean, cold water per bag. To do this, use a heavy duty mixer on a slow setting for a couple of minutes. Most importantly, freshly mixed adhesive should be left for five to 10 minutes and then remixed before being used. This is where its strength comes from. Once it's been remixed, the bucket life is roughly one hour. Although, like a lot of timings, this is gonna depend on the weather conditions. Step three, apply your adhesive. When it comes to applying the adhesive to the insulation board, we typically recommend the dot and dab method. Using a trowel, apply the adhesive evenly around the edge of a board in a three to four centimeter track. Then, dot and dab adhesive spots inside this perimeter, roughly three of them on each board. The adhesive should cover at least 40% of the back of the board. On the other hand, it's equally valid to apply a layer of adhesive to the entirety of the board, something we call complete coverage. This method is better suited for completely flat walls. Either way, the amount of adhesive being used is gonna be similar on both methods. Each 25 kilo bag has a coverage of around five meters squared, although this is gonna depend on the quality of your substrate. A flat wall will require less adhesive. Step four, fit your insulation to the substrate. The insulation boards should always be attached in a staggered formation. When it comes to the corners, you do this by interlinking the insulation from the two sides. When installing the insulation around window or door frames, cut your insulation boards in an L shape. You must check the joints between the boards are not in line with the frame edges. This will be crucial in preventing cracks appearing in the future. Step five, leveling and filling. With the boards on the wall, it's now time to align the insulation as best you can. This is the perfect time to do this, given the adhesive is still soft. Using a spirit level, make sure all the boards are level both horizontally and vertically. If there are any gaps between the boards that are wider than two mil, you should fill these with strips of off-cut insulation or expanding foam tape. A common mistake is to fill these gaps with adhesive, but this can lead to cold bridges, which put simply are passages that allow heat to escape out of a property. Beyond cold bridging, cracks will also appear between the joints if they are not corrected properly. Step six, mechanical fixings. Once the adhesive has been left to dry for a couple of days, it's time to begin drilling the mechanical fixings. All our insulation systems require the use of mechanical fixings which help to make the system completely secure. 
we recommend installing five fixings per board or seven per meter squared. Depending on the fixing that is used, they can either be hammered into place or driven straight into the insulation using a power tool. If you are using metal fixings, it's really important to recess the fixing into the insulation board and insert a dowel cap. Step seven, smoothing and leveling the facade. Now that the fixings are in place, the surface of the insulation boards must be flat and level throughout. This step will be really beneficial when it comes to applying the render later. If you're using EPS, all uneven areas can be made good using a rasp. The rasp will also take off the natural oils that rest on the surface of the EPS and encourage bonding with the base coat layer. Be sure to run the rasp over any dowel caps if needed. With the facade now level and secure, you are ready to move on to the base coat and mesh stage, which we will cover in an upcoming video. As always, all products mentioned in this tutorial can be bought online or in store at the EWI store, now offering nationwide delivery. Do leave your questions and comments down below and join us again soon.